Dumelang Baraba Mudimo can it is a great blessing to be sharing this uh summonet Yapulo Yasabata. Bahe Chu Bahe Chu Dumela and La Dumedisi or Madume Hochwaka Hafa was tekaha uh Kesholohela repeat the sink resante relebati di relebremo dimocaseo that's really a blessing because can it, we have lost our loved ones we have lost our brothers our sisters our mothers our grandfathers and can it to look but baba santsengele batsili let us give god glory and honor kwa ntle ga go senya nako today i will be focusing tota tota mo why did god tell moses mo exodus 25 verse 8 hore create build me a sanctuary so that i may dwell amongst you are ya peling mo ena ke na kwa gago re go le bana ba gago a skana na ke o tlwalang ne wena skana na yo bona lang ne wena ke sa go lele ke go kopa amen Kaniti, it's really one of the beautiful texts. The Rebonang Mudi Mokasebili Are Moshe tell the Israelites that they must create or build a sanctuary that I may live amongst my people. Mare, the chance will be to go back where humanity started back to eden where god himself said let us make men in our own image therefore that suggests for a man you and me were created in the image of god simply saying we were created to reveal and reflect who God is because we are created in his image. Then the problem came Kwaku Genesis 3 where the devil messed up the plan Yamudimo in creating man in his image. So the question is because we are created in the image of God why then did we need a sanctuary or a church? Because if you are created in God's image, it means when a self as you can create, you can reveal God without going to church. Mariano, the, 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 the thing the thing is now the argument is now. Genesis 3 came. When now Men started to reflect something or another image which is not God. But the question is, which image did men started to resemble? So I'm glad that's a question. <clears throat> so let us just uh, stop for a second and look at evidences of now because man was in the image of God after Genesis 3 which image did man now took which displeased God which God initially said create a sanctuary so that I may dwell again because in Genesis 1 God dwelled with man because he she was resembling his image now the sanctuary says Men stop to reflect my image, so I need to dwell amongst men so that they may resemble and reflect the same image which they used to. Now, then here is God. Aquala, the Bible to show us men which image are we starting to reflect after Genesis 3? The Israelites. At Mount Sinai. Moses goes up to the mountain to collect 
the law of God, the character of God, the Ten Commandments. Now Aaron and the Israelites are by the mountain. They tell Aaron, Aaron, your brother, we don't know what is he doing up the mountain. So we need a God whom we can serve, whom we can praise, a God who is nearer to us. So Moses, as we know, Aaron actually, as we know, took all the jewelries and made a God. So what's surprising is the God which the Israelites made, it's, it's, it's not a God who is a man. <laughs> it's not a God who is an angel. But the God which they made, it's a God who reflects and resembles the character of an animal. And I've looked at this word animal. It's synonymous to a, a, a word which means a beast. So actually now, the Israelites are saying, we need a God in the image of a beast whom we can relate to. But the question is, why a beast? Let us go again to, 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 to Genesis 3. Genesis 3 says, a serpent, and a serpent, it's an animal, and an animal is synonymous to a beast. So, man was deceived and stopped resembling the character of God and started to resemble the character of what deceived a man, which is an animal and a beast. So, it meant that now man stopped to resemble God and started to resemble a beast. Now, it makes sense why the God which the Israelites created was resembling a beast. Oh, no, so quickly. The second point, Joseph and his brothers, they sold Joseph and went back to their father with an account that our brother, Joseph, was eaten by the beast. Ellen White says they were as if they were telling lies, but in actual fact, that was true because they were the beasts which devoured their brother. Simply saying their image was, in, was resembling and reflecting the image of the beast. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar, when he stopped acknowledging who God is, he started to resemble the beast. And God, because he looked at the character of Nebuchadnezzar, told him, seven years, because your image is who you are, now it will now be with the king resembled outside. He was an animal. He was a beast for seven years. Full years. Ah, it's not enough. Ooh. Now the Israelites, coming back to the Israelites. When they sinned, because they stopped resembling a, 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 the God himself, they started to resemble a, 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 a beast-like character, an animal-like character. When they sinned, they had to carry ah, a, a, a beast to the sanctuary, so that the beast must be slain. And the one who walked out now was the one who resembled and reflect God. Ah, swahwa. Okay, the last point, the last point, the last point. When Christ was born, it's surprising that he was not born in a, in a hotel, or he was not born in a uh, in a hospital, or uh, he was born amongst the amongst the people. But it's strange because Christ, my Christ, your Christ, my Savior, your Savior, your Savior, he was born in a staff of animals. Ooh, as if God is saying, I'm going and descending to earth, which is 
full of animal beast like characters but because i love those the, the, those beasts because i love these animals i am going to die so that i may kill the same beasts and man has to start reflecting christ because he died for men so create in me a sanctuary back to the same one that i may live amongst you so what was actually God saying? God was simply saying, Hey, Emoshe, tell the Israelites that there's this word which is called neuropathicity. Neuropathicity simply says things or actions or habits which are done repeatedly now forms your character. So actually, a, a, a sanctuary was meant for neuropathicity that each and every actions which is done daily in the sanctuary has to become a habit and a habit has to become a character and by the character the destiny your destiny the Israelites destiny for life and eternity was decided so uh, God was saying let them have me daily so that the animal in them should die and my character should be victorious. And by my character, salvation is guaranteed. There's another word called Tama. Tama actually is related to the artifacts in the sanctuary. So, for now, before you enter the sanctuary, Mutahana, there was Wabona, that bowel, which the priest used to wash their hands. And it simply symbolized baptism. So if that symbolized a baptism and neuropathicity says actions repeated daily, suggesting that you have to always die with Christ on daily basis. That's how to kill the beast in you and reflect the character of God. Now, after that artifact, there is what we call the altar of sacrifice. The altar of sacrifice simply symbolized that Christ himself was your sacrifice and he died on your behalf. So acknowledging and knowing that now you are not your own because you were purchased. So it means you are living with a character that Christ died for you. So you ought to die daily. That's how to kill the beast in you. So from there, you enter what we call the most holy. No, the holy place. So in the holy place, there's a king uh, lampstand. And there is a table of showbread, and the, there is the, a, a, an altar of incense. Ah. Short, your weight is the light unto my feet. So, if God's weight is the light, it means if you you acknowledge and live according to the light daily, that's how to kill the beast. And the table of the showbread, we know, simply reflects the word of God, which is eaten on daily basis. So eating the word must become a character to kill the beast on daily basis. The art of incense, the prayer for the saints. So it suggests that if prayer is your character and your lifestyle, the beast is guaranteed to be slain in the sanctuary. And now we go to the most holy place. And this is what we call the Ark of the Covenant. And in the Ark of the Covenant, there is what we call the law of God, his character. And above, there is what we call the mercy seat, the presence of God. So, if you live daily with his character, his word, 
his laws and his precepts. Automatically, the Shekinah glory, his presence, will be on you. So, actually, what is Sehwa saying? Sehwa was simply his saying, as we welcome the Sabbath, let us welcome the Sabbath, knowing exactly that the church, the sanctuary, the Sabbath, is meant for us to rest because we are killing the beast in the sanctuary so that when we rest, we rest knowing that the character in us is not revealing and reflecting the beast, but it's revealing and reflecting God himself. Ah, we serve God. When he looks at you, when he looks at me, he simply desires to see himself because he has given us a beast proof way of salvation. So it's strange that even today we still have amongst us Christians who are revealing Christ outwardly, but inside they are beasts. So how to slay a beast? Sanctuary. That's where the beasts are slain. Derek in the church. That's where the beast is slain. So as we contemplate along these words, let us know for Mudimo actually. Why elita wa baka wore bola ya polo holo e ka mogwena. And kanniti. That's how to slay a beast sanctuary. Actions repeated forms habit. Habit forms character. It's determined. Because let us grow more in your character and less in the beast character. Asabata sa kaho mareyana sa kaskat simulola ina sabata silo kaniti retena gele rejuvenated and revived because we know the purpose ya kareke is to slay the beast in us and resemble and reflect your character. Kwa wale kaho opa in Jesus name I pray. Amen.